Between 2013 and 2022, uh, missile production is expected to be worth approximately $206 billion. Um, this is increasing from an annual figure in 2013 of $13.7 billion to around $20.4 billion in 2022. Um, this increase is driven by um, the production of new missiles coming through, such as the SM-3 Block 2A, um, and also um, FAD, for example. Um, so we are seeing a lot more missiles um, being developed at the moment that are um, coming into service in the next 10 years. The leading missile manufacturers are currently Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin are currently first with 32.6 billion and Raytheon slightly behind with 31.5 billion. Um, Lockheed Martin's growth is really driven by their land-based air defence capabilities and their missile defence interceptors. Um, THAAD and PAC-3 are the main two. Um, these actually account for 60% of Lockheed Martin's missile revenue during the forecast period. And PAC-3, they're actually going to produce approximately 1,200 units through 2022. So this is a major driver of their business at the moment. And for Raytheon, um, air-to-air -air missiles play a major part, um, with AMRAM and AIM-9X alone worth 8.5 billion over the next 10 years. Um, the SM3 programme is expected to be worth 8 billion um, through 2022. Um, so again, this is a very significant programme. Um, Lockheed Martin tend to have um, a focus on ground-based, whereas Raytheon have a focus on um, naval-based. Um, and then we see a competition in the air with Raytheon having air-to-air -air missiles and Lockheed Martin mainly focusing on um, air-to-ground missiles. So that's really where they're competing. Um, the two companies aren't competing in the, um, against each other in the Navy or ground spheres. Um, the com main competition between the two tends to be in the air. The three biggest countries in the missile market are currently the United States, India and China. The United States is by far the largest customer of missiles, um, accounting for 24% of the market. Despite the fact that we've seen um, budget cuts and reductions over the last few years, um, they still remain uh, significant with $49.8 billion expected to be procured um, over the next 10 years. Um, India, um, we're actually seeing a threefold increase in the amount of money being spent on missiles uh, between 2013 and 2022. Um, with $17.6 billion in total over the, that 10 years. Um, this is due to um, missiles having matured, um, they, they're reaching the stage where they enter in production, and there is a significant requirement um, across the board in India's missile sectors. Um, that's ranging from uh, missile defence programmes, um, naval air defence, um, all the way down to anti-tank weapons. So when they have a very large requirement. Um, China, it, it's no surprise that they are third in the market, given the sense that they are uh, rearming quite significant at the moment, um, with expenditure ranging from ballistic missiles through to air-to-air um, -air missile technology. In terms of regions, um, the Middle East is seeing perhaps the largest growth in the market over the, the 10 years, and this is really driven by the threat from Iran. Um, we see uh, missile defence and air defence spending by Qatar, the UAE and Saudi Arabia, and this is really driving that market forward. And with Qatar probably the biggest growing country in the region, they have really um, invested a lot of money in, in systems such as that. Um, so we will see those being delivered over the next 10 year period, um, which will significantly boost the spend in that region. If we break the market down by seeker type, uh, we can see that 30% of revenues are going to come from missiles with active radar seekers. Um, this equates to roughly 61 billion US dollars over the forecast period. The next largest um, seeker type in terms of revenue is infrared, um, equating to 19% of the market. Also with 19% are missiles without a seeker. Um, so these are missiles that are guided uh, by other means, um, such as GPS, uh, inertia navigation, or command guidance um, with a seeker in the rear of the missile, for example. Um, so that accounts for 19%. Um, also on the chart, you can see um, SO and DO. Uh, this um, is basically where we have opportunities where the seeker type hasn't been defined yet because we don't know which missile is actually going to fulfill these requirements. And this accounts for 22% of the market. So that's the, um, the SO and DO that you can see on the chart there. Um, the missiles market uh, has been growing significantly um, over the next 10 years. 
um, driven largely by missile and air defence. Um, we see significant threats from ballistic missiles. Um, the efforts to counter those, and we see many interceptors uh, being produced, and this is a, a very large driver of revenues. So we don't see a lot of uh, procurement over the next 10 years, and missiles remain a very key component of any force. So that market remains strong and will be buoyant um, over the many years to come.